On this episode of Pedalbox, we're building lots of framework at the front of the car and adding sheet metal to finally start building the bonnet. Well, after last episode's success making up these front wings, I think they're looking really, really great. It's now time to move on to something even more terrifying, which is the bonnet or centre section or whatever you're going to call this part. Do you really get to call it a bonnet if it's not over an engine? In any case, that's our next move, which means obviously we've put the windscreen wipers on and the remnants of a windscreen in, which actually makes a degree of sense. We need to work out the contour of kind of the trailing edge of the bonnet and how that whole shape is going to work, where it reconnects at the top here. So we've got the wipers and everything in so that we know what clearances we need. And we've got this piece of 10 mil tube that we've bent into something that crudely resembles what we think is going to be the trailing edge of our front panel here. The front's probably going to be permanently fixed to the car because there's nothing really that we need access to through the front. And the rear section, we're going to make removable so that we can get into our suspension, into the cooling pack and everything to remove that and everything else that's all in here. Because we do still have, you know, all of our brakes and half our fuel system and stuff in here. Um, the piece that's going on the back, we're going to have to cut a great big hole in to, uh, to draw air out of our radiator duct, obviously. So that's going to be it's going to have to have like a little bit of a duct made on the bottom of it that we sort of seal onto the uh, lower half of the duct here and then we should be good so the plan such as it is plan might be too big of a word was the uh, the idea at the minute is we've got some more angle and this is going to support the top sheet of metal here around the edge of our scoop Well, as you can see, we finished the frame around our duct here and uh, we may have got a bit carried away because we made the whole rest of the frame as well. So in front of me, I've got almost all of the skeleton for our removable front end. We've got one more kind of rib to put in from this point here onto the front corner and obviously the same on the other side. And that's going to give us a flat plane for each of the different pieces of metal that we want to put on here. And that will form the entire front uh, clip as we want it. This front edge under here is actually going to fit underneath a permanently attached welded on skin on the front end. So that'll keep the front down and stop it from flying off as we drive. And on the rear, we're going to put like some pins or something that we haven't figured out yet. I've spent ages stressing about the bonnet and working out exactly how we're going to make it. It's the largest single piece that we'll be welding on any section of the car and actually having this nice big vent through the middle simplifies it a great deal into smaller panels but it adds a lot more welds in and that means there's a much greater chance of it warping. Fortunately after doing all of the work on the arches I'm a little bit more confident in panel beating and I'm pretty certain I can work around whatever we end up with. That said this is still an awful lot of welding. After a lot of welding into the dark last night, we eventually managed to get all of these skins on, well, two of these skins on the inside edge, and we've just added the last one on that side. And they're actually fairly similar to one another. There are some small discrepancies, and we haven't welded the back edge yet, but for the most part, it does work. It has presented us with an interesting problem though, because these actually scoop down a lot more than we expected them to. They haven't so much shrunk in, it's just with this plane and this plane being slightly different because of where they align on the car, raising up in the centre, it's created a bit of a dip here. And that means if we run a dead straight line from there down to the front of the car, we're going to have a kind of ridge line that comes down and then drops off again, which is going to look really, really weird, and I'm not a fan. So we have to improvise something else. So just using this sheet of aluminium, you might be able to see what I mean. If we go dead straight down that way, this becomes very much a ridge line where it kind of scoops up slightly and then drops straight off. And it looks wrong. So the solution to that is to lift the center of this a little bit. There's two ways we can do it. One is to just curve the front nose like that, which really doesn't look too bad, but still presents us with a problem. How are we going to support this edge? 
because we need to put a curve in whatever support we put down the side, which is fairly difficult. The other one is we just lift the front a little bit and we worked out it needs to be about an inch higher which isn't too bad and that allows for a little bit of curvature in, in in the side but it's not so much that it'll be difficult to actually get a nice even bend in some angle iron or box section or something like that so we need to have a nice rounded front nose because i really like the body line that we have at the bottom edge of this bonnet and how it flows into the bottom of the lights and to do that we're going to use this And I know a lot of you are panicking that we're putting 50 mil, two mil wall uh, tube across the front of the car, but actually we don't need all of it. What we need is a quarter of it. I think this is actually a little bit more than a quarter. This is probably getting on for a third, but the plan is to weld this onto the very front edge here and then pie cut around the back and just conform it around. So this will stay on the car permanently. In the back, there'll be a little notch that comes around and that will allow this section of the bonnet to be removable. So the whole bonnet all the way to this front edge is now gonna be removable, which is actually a little bit easier long-term for a great many other things. It does mean we're probably gonna to wanna to put bonnet hinges on it, which, yay, a little bit more complexity, but it'll be really nice to, to have that complete seam. And one of the reasons we were looking at that as an alternative was because as much as this is a nice fit and it drops down nicely into here, getting this section at the front of the car to come back up and blend in seamlessly to this section at the same level so that it will drop in and you won't have like an awkward step that comes down, we can't work out a good way to do it. So we're going to join the whole lot together into one piece, but extend the framework forward, nothing needs to change at the back, and it should give a much better end result. Probably. Maybe. So we worked across the front of the car, welding it in place and creating slices so that we could bend it very, very gradually to conform to the curve that we already had on the car. After that, we added in another piece behind it that would form the very front edge of the bonnet and accidentally welded that onto the front of the car, but that was no big deal. After that, we joined it at each end to connect it to the rest of the bonnet we'd already built around the scoop. Next, we split some 1 by one inch box into two U-section pieces, half an inch roughly by an inch wide. This will help support the bonnet front to back on each side of the scoop down towards the nose. And as the middle section at the front of the scoop already has a slight rise to it, this will allow us to shape the front section of the metal a little bit better across the front and continue the lines from the side of the scoop down towards the nose. And then it was time to add the sheet metal. Now this is the last piece of steel we had to be able to cut this out of, so we made sure that we got it absolutely spot on. Then once we were happy with the size, we could drop it in place, tack weld it in, and yes, you guessed it, a lot more welding and a lot more chances to try and ripple the panel. We're at the end of another very, very long weekend. And as you can see, it has gone dark. We've got some lights out, but the bonnet, is basically done and I'm pretty happy <laughs> yeah had one of those moments where I sort of took a few steps back and just sort of stared at it for a minute I'm uh, yeah. kind of delighted yeah there's still a few bits that need cleaning up we need to do the inside edge along here um, and we need to weld across the back edge of the panel up to the top where the windscreen is and the scuttle panel but for the most part it's basically done and it's getting late, so we don't want to make too much more noise. We've been doing a lot of grinding today and uh, it's been very, very noisy. On the upside, it all fits, it all works. It, it kind of flows nicely, it's... I gotta say, it's right. from here, looking across it, I get big slant nose Porsche vibes off it. Of course, what Chris meant to say is that this resembles a classic 911 and not, in fact, a 935 slant nose. It had been a very long day. You probably notice that it's sitting a little bit proud at the front and a little bit low at the back. Basically, there's nothing underneath this front lip holding it, so it's just kind of sitting in where it should be. And eventually, next episode probably, or even before then maybe, it'll have a piece across the bottom and some stops, or, or we'll eventually put some stops in, but there'll definitely be a bottom edge to it so it actually fits nicely. But honestly, this is an enormous achievement. I can't believe we did this in two days. 
Yeah. This well, would have been months, not so long ago for yeah, us. E- I mean, even a day and a half, really. Um, yeah, it's genuinely kind of mind blowing that it worked. We've got some bits that we need to fix. Like uh, we had to shave down one side over there for clearance, so it's blown through the wing a little bit. But that's not end of the world terrible. Um, the only thing we're currently debating and there's arguments for and against from both of us is adding an extra piece to the scoop to come back maybe three or four inches here. So you should also let us know in the comments what you think and I'll try and take some pictures at some point and put them up so that you can have a good comparison between the two just with a piece of scrap uh, aluminium or something across the top. Yeah just to kind of close up the top of it a bit because from here it looks okay but kind of from behind it kind of is a bit of a, a big see, void. You can see a long way down in and see all the fans and everything else which is cool but it's a very big hole um, and I wonder whether having just a little bit of coverage up to there might improve it a little bit but that is definitely something not for today. <laughs> yeah, that's something that you'll see next time on this yes. show. And if you haven't already, you should be subscribed to the channel and you should hit the little bell notification icon so that you will get notified when the next episode goes out because this being episode 99, next episode is 100. Hey! <laughs> I really wanted to have all of the bodywork done and I think I've near enough achieved that goal like there are some small parts that won't be on by next episode it won't be on down there we probably won't have the front finished but by and large i'm happy to say that the bodywork will be done you will be able to see the shape of the car and actually what it's going to look like by episode 100 or by the end of episode 100 um, and somebody did say in the comments it'd be nice to have just a walk around the car so after 100 once we've got to the end i think yeah, a walk around, a look at all of the bits and pieces uh, on the car and how it is, is definitely warranted. Yeah, if you would like to buy one of these t-shirts, although not quite as ruined as this one is. Don't worry, yours will be new. You can go to shop.pedalbox.show and see all of our merch. We've got t-shirts, long sleeve, uh, as well as hoodies, caps, beanies, which I actually have got on as well. All of that sort of stuff, and we'll get out to you as soon as possible. Yeah, and if you'd rather give us money for no gift in return, you can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and support us there from anywhere upward of a dollar a month. And the best thing is do that first, because depending on the tier, you get discount in the yeah. shop. Once again, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel, make sure the bell notification is done, and we will see you in episode 100. Unless I drop something in between now and 100, which... That'll be episode 99.5. Yeah.